All right, here it is. Brand new Spectrum NX10 transmitter. I got it yesterday in the mail. It was about a day old. This is not a Spectrum radio. It's my Fataba 16SZ. That's my main radio that I use. But a few years ago, I got addicted to the Bind and Fly model, so I picked up the DX6. But over the past few months, I've been having issues with the newer Bind and Fly models, so I decided to upgrade. And I originally pre ordered the NX8. But that kept getting pushed back and pushed back in the NX-10 and she became available. So I decided to switch my order from the NX-8 to the NX-10. Now I know a lot of people have probably already seen videos on the features and everything of the NX series radio. But I actually found a couple issues that... Um, hopefully they can be addressed in the future. If not, that's okay. Uh, first off, one of the things I really like is the speech functions of the radio and the folding antenna, which allows me to actually fit it in my radio box. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Now, first... There have been a lot of videos out there about the updating issue with the radio, having it lock up mid-update. I do have the current software loaded. Um, I performed that as soon as I opened it and got it out of the box. I did notice that it did seem like it took... A little while to do the update and that the see there's the new update right there it's already installed I did notice that it did take quite a while to do the update it took about three to four minutes to download and about five or six minutes to update uh, I'd noticed that the update status bar seemed to restart about 12 times but I just let it go and it ended up updating just fine now, one of the issues that I've noticed, and it's not much of an issue, but I did notice it, is the radio comes with the magnetic adapter that plugs into the micro USB port. Now, I was a little disappointed that's all the farther it goes in. So it sticks out quite a ways, which is a little disappointing. I thought it would be a little bit more flush with that. Then the cord plugs in pretty simply. But I scared myself a couple times because when I went to go pull the plug out, the entire magnetic adapter comes with it. It doesn't stay in the radio unless you pull it sideways so pull it sideways cord works just fine pulled straight out it actually stays attached to the charging cable which scared me a couple times because i thought i lost a little adapter plug that's not a big deal The biggest issue that I've found so far is with some of the older Bind and Fly models. This is my Park Zone SU-26. It's one of the reasons I got Spectrum in the first place because I love this little airplane. I also have a little Blade MCX that is an absolute blast to fly. Now, the issue I have now is when I go to select the airplane okay so now I'm on the SU-26 and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to pause the video so I can plug it in and then start it back up again all right so there's the airplane 
plugged in, all the controls work, but about every 10 seconds, the motor kicks in. Now, I am not touching the radio at all. The throttle stick is at full idle, and every 10 seconds, the motor kicks in. Now, it doesn't matter if I have the motor running at all. If I make the motor run, the motor actually surges every 10 seconds, just as it's sitting here. All right, so now I've switched to the Blade MCX. I have it here. And I'm going to pause the video so I can plug the battery in. All right, so battery's plugged in. It's bound. The controls do work. But just like the little Sukhoi, every 10 seconds, the motor engages. And again, I am not touching the stick, and the stick is at idle. So every 10 seconds, the motor pulses. And again, even if you throttle up a little bit, the motor surges every 10 seconds. Now, the software update, the air, airware log, does say at the bottom... That they've had issues with a twitch every 10 seconds with these receivers. Now I believe that all of those receivers are both DSM-X and DSM-2 capable receivers. And they suggest to operate these receivers in DSM-2 mode. The receiver that's in the MCX and the Sukhoi are both DSM-2 only aircraft. And when I did bind the both aircraft with the radio, it said bind successful in DSM-2 mode. That's when I noticed the twitching. Also, I tried to rebind it, forcing it in DSM-2. And that didn't seem to make any difference whatsoever. So, again, a couple issues I've noticed on day one. Not a big deal. I was just really hoping to get rid of my DX6. But as of right now, I have two aircraft I cannot fly on my new NX10 because of the little twitch on the power. I am not willing to try it on some of my other DSM-2 only receivers because they're attached to helicopters and I'm a little afraid that if the motor engages it could cause some damage. Hopefully Spectrum addresses this issue in the next airware update. If anybody figures out how to fix this or the solution to this problem or can think of anything that I'm missing, you please let me know. Otherwise, thank you for watching.